it's Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another classic album review and we're having a little delve into the Rolling Stones magazine albums of the decades for the month of October. So this one's from the 1970s and this was ranked number three according to the Rolling Stones. Now it's an album by Brian Ferry. Of course Brian Ferry is known for the voice of Roxy Music, but he also had a pretty good um, solo career as well. Now, the album we're talking about is This Foolish Things, which was his debut solo album, which at the time was a little bit different from what he was doing with um, Roxy Music, because A, it consists of entirely cover versions of very standard songs. So, who plays on this? Well, of course, Borrowing Ferry does lead vocals and acoustic guitar, guitar, acoustic piano, sorry. Eddie Jobson, keyboards and synthesizers and violin. David Skinner, no relation, on acoustic piano. John Porter on guitars and bass. Phil Manzera as a guitar solo. Paul Thompson drums. John Punter, additional drums. Okay, the first track on here is a Bob Dylan number from his freewheeling album from 1963, and it's called A Hard Rain's Gonna F Fall. This is totally different to Bob Dylan's version, but a very good version, and I do actually like this track. And it was a really big hit for Brian Ferry as well. Okay, the next one is River Assault. Now, this is a Ketty Lester. Um, track uh, written by Irving Brown and Bernard Zachary and it's from the album Love Letters which came out in 1962 once again it's nothing like this classic version from the 60s does Brian do a good version of it? yeah I think he does there's nothing wrong with this um, I mean Br Brian's got a great voice anyway so you know he can he can sing most things, and that is a pretty good version of it. Okay, next up, "Don't Ever Change" a crickets cover written by Jerry Goffin and Carol King, of course. And I don't like this. I don't like this version. Should never have even contemplated in covering this because it's t it just doesn't sound nothing like the original and the original is far better so I didn't like that one. Next track Peace of My Heart which is an Irma Franklin cover from a song from 1967 but uh, it's all but it is of course a Janice Joplin song and the only person that can sing this is Janis Joplin. And he, sing it, he sang it like, more like Irma Franklin than Janis, but it's still not a very good version. I don't like it. He just hasn't got the same growl as Janis. Okay, next up he does an Elvis song from Jailhouse Rock, Baby I Don't Care. Uh, great version. It is good. Um, nah. It's not as good as Delvis's, but uh, I prefer a version that Queen did at Wembley and at uh, Nebworth. <laughs> but there you go. Okay, the next one. Now, this is a track called It's My Party that was done by Leslie Gore in 1963. I don't remember. I don't like this version, but who remembers the version from 1981 by Dave Stewart and Barbara Gaskin, which was a really good version. But this, now Brian, ah, you, you, it didn't sound right. Then we have a Beach Boys co cover from uh, the Shutdown Volume Two album from '64. 
don't worry baby it's okay but it just hasn't got that lovely beach boy harmonies on it so <laughs> it doesn't do anything for me then we got sympathy for, for the devil great song from beggar's banquet from the stones it just didn't sound right sorry <laughs> Give me the Stones version any day, and for once I'll say that the version the Guns N' Roses did is a little bit better than this. Then we get Tracks of My Tears, which is a Miracles cover from 1965. I think this is a really good version of this song. This is more like it. This, this sort of song suits Brian Ferry. And I think he does a great version of it. I really like this version of the song. I like the original, but this is a really good version. Then we do a Beatles song, and we do You Won't See Me, which is off Rubber Soul, of course, from 1965. He does a half-decent version of it. But it's not quite the same as the Beatles, but the guitar solo is pretty good. Then we have a track called I Love How You Love Me, which is a song from the Paris Sisters from 1961. Sorry. Now, there's not many male singers that can sing female songs. Now, the Paris Sisters, of course, were an all-girl band, and it is a really good version of it. When you listen to the original to this, you go, yeah, this isn't too bad. Not bad at all, Brian. Then we have a four tops track, Love, Loving You is Sweeter Than Ever. It's listenable. Yeah, that's all right. Then he does this, these foolish things, which is an old song, very old song, written in 1935. Um... Lots of people have covered this. Lena Washington, Sam Cooke, Rod Stewart, Ella Fitzgerald. So, my favourite version of this is Ella Fitzgerald's. This... It's not... The, I don't know, there's, there's not many people can sing this good. Everyone's had a good... Sam Cooke wasn't too bad, Lena Washington... But now Ella Fitzgerald sings this great. So, what did the critics think of it? So we're going to start with my favourite critic of, you know, of all time, Robert, Robert Criscow. And he found that Ferry's both undercuts in, and the inflated idealism of Bob Dylan's hard rain is going to fall and reaffirms the essential power and establishes Leslie's Gore's It's My Party as a protest song with his cover of These Foolish Things reminds me that Poppy's only well foolish things may predate not only Andy Warhol but rock and roll itself. He didn't have waffle. But the new Rolling Go Stones guy Dave Marsh wrote this Foolish things pits Leslie Gore against Bob Dylan's Bob Dylan and just not for effect. So what are the yeah uh, things? All music gave it a four. A Robert Cristo gave it A minus. Overdose A minus. The Rolling Stone Guide gave it five out of five. Q gave it four out of five. How did it do in the charts? Number 18 in Australia, number 10 in Holland, and number 5 here in the UK. Got a gold disc. Right. There are some pretty good covers on this. But there are some ones that just didn't work. It's got a great voice and it's not a bad covers. Our album, I don't mind listening to it. But... Number three on the Rolling Stones best albums of the decades. I don't think so. Of all the great albums that came out in the 70s, mm. this it's just I just understand 
where they got the idea this is what the number three album of the 70s that's you know, just off the top of my head 70s albums dark side of the moon in rock machine head close to the edge they are that's just off the top of my head and this comes in at number three in my books this wouldn't even get in the top 20 I like the album, but it's not a great album. It's a good album. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 5 out of 10. Okay, a bit controversial, but there you go. Okay, and that's all for today. As the sun's making an appearance here in Northampton after two days of drab. Um... I'll be back tomorrow. What have I got for you tomorrow? Well, we've got part two of the Alexis Corner story. And we're going to look at some albums that he did with a band that he called Alexis, Alexis Corner's Blues Incorporated. And tomorrow's... Retro... It's all right. Ro, ro, Rocky's having a grunt. Um, tomorrow's retro ranking is the, twa the twang master of... The Gretsch, and it's Mr. Dwayne Eddy. That's all coming up tomorrow. Have a great day, everyone, and I will catch up with you really soon. Bye for now. <laughs>